So let's get started with our lab here. So first I'll start with router one here. So router one, if you see the first thing, I'll verify my IP addressing. They are pre-configured. Let me just try to change the IP address on my LAN interface. It's not, it must be 10.12. So I'll just change it to 10.0.12.1 with 255.255.255.0 okay so so I just try to verify my IP addressing it is same or not F0 by 0 which is connecting between 1 and 2 I am using 12 and S1 by 0 connecting between 1 and 3 13 and S1 by 1 connected between 1 and 4 14 and finally the loopback interface which I am using 1.1 so similar way if I go to my other routers, which is my router 3 and router 4, show IP interface brief. So these are the default addressing which I'm using. Similar way, if you want, you can even verify IPv6 addresses, which are again pre-configured here. So mostly they are pre-configured in case if they are not forming the neighborship, maybe there is some IP address misconfiguration, then we can easily troubleshoot that. But hopefully there is no errors here. So all the routers are pre-configured with the exact IP addressing scheme what you will see over there. You, you'll find some extra addressing also, which I'll be using in my advanced MPLS classes. So, but these addresses are pre-configured here. Even the loopback also you can see here. So let's get started with our basic configurations on router one. I'll start with router one here. So the first thing we need to configure router ISS inside my router mode. And you can define the process ID here, uh, similar to area tag. We can use it. I'm not using it here. So I'm just leaving it blank with the default process ID here. And then we need to define the network address and the network address, network entity title address. It must be as per the question, as per the question we are using 49.0134 is your area ID. And then we are going to define the system ID will be all zeros and 1.00 so exact area id so it's not compulsory that you should use areas all zeros you can use all ones also it's up to you but it must be unique so i'm just using the same way so once we define the network id the next thing we need to enable the interfaces with ipv6 and ipv4 router iss commands so as per our diagram if you see here in my diagram i'm using this interface these two interfaces and then I'm using loopback zero interface, three interfaces I'm using. Still, we did not come to this interface. So we'll see that in the later on tasks. So I'm getting into my interface S1 by zero, which is connecting to my router three. I'm going to say IP router ISS command to enable IPv4 ISS and then IPv6 router ISS commands. Similar way, I'm going to enable on another interface, IP router ISS and IPv6 router ISS. And finally, on the loopback interface, IP router ISS and IPv6 router ISS. So once we add this command, now if I if I want to verify, we'll verify the neighborship later on. So the next task we need to configure the similar commands on router two and router three as well. Okay. So if we just check the history commands, so I directly go to routers and configure if you want you can use notepad to modify these commands it's up to you to save your time but if you're doing for the first time i suggest you to configure the commands all the commands so that you have enough practice so 0134 is an area id and then all zeros and router 3 is 3 and the next first letter address is 0 and after that i'm getting into my Router 3, on the router 3, I got two interfaces, S1 by 0, which is connecting to my router 1. And then the other interface, I'm using F0 by 0, which is connecting to 4. So IP router ISS command and IPv6 router ISS command. And also we are advertising our loopback interface so that we can uh, test the connectivity between all the routers. Instead of using LAN interface, we are using loopback to loopback reachability. Done. So now similar way, we need to do the same thing on the router 4 also. So let's go to router 4. Router ISS, network ID 
zero one three four because I want them to be in the same area. So the area system ID is all zeros, and then finally the router number is four, and then interface interface on the router four I am connecting interface F zero by zero, which is connecting between router three and four. And similar way, I'm connecting S1 by one interface between one and four. So IP router ISS, IPv6 router ISS, and IP router ISS commands. And finally, on the loopback interface, also I need to enable the same commands. IPv6 router ISS commands. Done. So once we do this, uh, we did the initial configurations as per the requirement. We configured all the routers. As per our diagram, you can see all the routers. You can find the steps here. Similar way, we just configure in each and every router. Similar way on the router three also, and also we did the same thing on the router four also. Now, once we do this, the next step is to verify the neighborship, ensure that the neighborship should establish. So, to verify the neighborship, either I can use show ISS neighbors commands or I can use show CLNS neighbors commands. So, I prefer to use ISS neighbors, and then after that, we'll verify the database and then. Uh, and then we'll we'll do some basic verifications as well. Let us let us try to go to router one. So to verify, I should see the neighborship show ISS neighbors. You can see I can see router three and router four are my neighbors, and by default the routers are running level one, level two. So the default type is level one, level two, and through which interface I'm connecting and the state is up. Now similar way, if you want, you can even use show CLNS neighbors also. It is going to define the same thing, but with a slight variation in the outputs. Now, after that, if I if I try to check the database, show ISS database, you can see these routers are by default running level one, level two, so they are going to maintain the database of level one as well as level two database. So it's a default behavior of the routers because if you check our routers, we did not configure any level type. When you don't configure any level types, by default it runs as level one, level two, which means it is going to maintain the default database of level one and level two. So similar way, if I try to check on other routers, router three and four, or any one router, so I'm getting into router three. Show ISS neighbors. I can see the neighborships here. On the router three, I have one neighbor that is router one. And I can see router four as my neighbor, but now there is a slight difference in the output here. If you try to see here, the difference is here. By default, you know when you are forming the neighborship with your point-to-point -point interfaces, so by default you have only one neighborship for both. But when you are forming the neighborship with broadcast networks like Ethernet or fast Ethernet interfaces, you have a separate neighborship for level one and separate neighborship for level two. So that's what you'll see here. For router four, it is showing me as two neighbors, two different neighbors. One for level one, one for level two. So don't get confused here. So it's actually the same router, but it is differentiating the neighbors with level one and level two because both the routers are running level one, level two. So that's the default behavior here. The same thing I I listed here. By default, all the routers are level one, level two. So each router maintains a separate database for level one, level two. And in case of Ethernet broadcast networks, ISS maintains a separate neighbors for level one and level two. And the next part is verifying the routes. I should be able to see the routes for IP version four as well as I should be able to ping, and I should be able to see the routes for IP version six as well. And I should be able to ping between these three routers. That's our next step to verify. So let's go to router one. On the router one, I should be able to see the routes coming from three and four. You can see I'm able to see the routes from level one. Because they are in the same area, so I'll get the routes in the form of level one, and I can see the routes coming from router three and router four, and in fact, I can also able to ping to them. If you want to ping from source for testing, whether you want to check from loopback to loopback pinging, you can even use source address. Okay, for testing, and I can even say four dot four dot four dot four. I can ping to them. Similar way, if I try to verify my IPv6 routing table. So you can see there is no IPv6 routes coming here. Now, any specific reason here? A simple thing: we did not enable IPv6 unicast routing here. There's a reason. 
So because IPv6 routing is not by default enabled in all the router IOS by default. So let me enable that IPv6 unicast routing and let me do the same thing on the router 3 as well. IPv6 unicast routing. So now once I enable this, so let's give some time for convergence here. Okay, so I was I was trying to check with OSPF. We are not running OSPF, we are running ISS. So probably now we can see show IPv6 route ISS. I can see the routes coming from router 3. I can see the routes coming from router 4 as well. And if you want, you can try to ping to those IPv6 addresses on the router 3 with source interface loopback 0. You can see it's pinging as well as I can try to ping to router 4 as well. It should be pinging. So now there is no separate neighborship for IPv4, IPv6. You have a common neighborship for ISS by default. So we don't have a separate neighborship commands for ISS. So only the thing we need to check for IPv4 and IPv6 is your route exchange. If your IPv4 is correctly configured, you'll see the IPv4 routes will be coming. And if you enable, if you configure IPv6 properly, then you will be able to see your IPv6 routes also coming into our routing table. So this is a very basic lab which we are, which we did here, running a normal, a basic ISS with a single area. So now, probably in our next sections, we'll be getting into much more detail, like some basic optimizations, like understanding some other options relating to our ISS.